What's up guys? Today we're going to review the Hovsco Hov Alpha and what makes this e-bike stand out in the pack is it has a torque sensor and a 20 amp hour battery pack and for the price it's a pretty darn good deal. That is if you use the link and coupon code below this video. If we compare this bike right here to the leading names in the space such as the Aventon Adventure 2 or like a rad power bike. The Aventon Adventure 2 for example has only a 15 amp hour battery pack and it costs $2,000. And while these bikes both have torque sensors this one this one has a 20 amp hour battery pack and it's way less than two grand. But is the bike any good is the big question. So let's, let's take a closer look at it then take it out for a full review. So this is definitely not my first Hobsco bike I've reviewed. I always like their little uh, luxurious feeling seat cover. And they package up their stuff here pretty nicely. I'll show you this stuff in a few. Of course, it comes with the knobby four inch wide by 26 inch tall fat tires. Pretty typical stuff, Hovsco branded sticker. And they use the same 180 millimeter rotors, pretty much on all good fat tire electric bikes. You get a plastic fender. And this one is the step through. In the color champagne, which I chose because I like it. But you can get this bike in either high step or step through, and there are other color options. Doesn't matter if you do step through or high step or what color, they all have the same specs. I just really prefer the step throughs on these fat tire e-bikes because they're heavy and they're just kind of hard to get on and off. So, I, I mean, in my opinion, it, it's just always easier this way. So I'd have to say two of the major benefits of this bike are the battery, which let me show you that. Oh yeah, the big battery. And then the torque sensor. I'll tell you more about the torque sensor here in a few. Basically, it just makes it way better if you're trying to get an, a bike to get some actual exercise on. But the battery, pretty crucial component here, obviously determines your range. We can see this is in fact a 20 amp hour, 960 watt hour battery. Got a little bit of weight to it. I see you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, turn on scale. Let's see how much it weighs. 11 pounds. So I mean, yeah, that's a that's a legit 20 amp hour battery pack there. So a big battery pack paired up with a torque sensor. The torque sensor will make better uh, use of that battery because the torque sensor gives you power based on how hard you're pedaling. It just, it controls the power a lot better. I'll show you later. And then the other thing here, the charger. Good, it's a three amp charger. So 20 divided by three. So it'll take you about six and a half hours to charge this thing from empty to full. Three amp charger is much better than a typical two amp charger we see on a lot of bikes. It charges your battery 50% faster. So we'll get that going while we build the bike. Also, you can charge this thing while it's on the bike, obviously. How it charges it when they ship it? Well, it's basically already almost full. So Hobsco has this uh, like flashlight thing built into the battery. It's got a couple of different modes. Strobe for me, kind of cool. And your other stuff like pedals, tools, front axle will have a quick release. The rallier guard, kickstand. Up front we get suspension with adjustments. You can lock it out if you want. Branded zoom and some manuals. Seat is wide, should be comfy. Has a quick release for easy adjustments. Pretty good amount of length. The light is back here. Not seeing how to remove the uh, insulator piece here to turn it on at the moment, but it does operate independent from the built-in battery on the bike. Of Alpha. We get seven gears on the Shimano cassette. Shimano turn a derailleur. You should put your derailleur guard on there. Prevent this from getting smashed in case you knock your bike over. And of course, our powerful Sutto motor. It's rated for 750 watts of continuous output. I'll show you how much torque it has soon. 750 sustained, 1032 watts peak. Handlebars go here. Spark it up a bit. We got a nice little rise to them and a light up front. And they sweep back just a bit. And they have ergonomic rubber grips held in place by a bolt so they won't rotate on you. And zoom hydraulic disc brakes with nice levers. These ones you can grab easily with one finger. They are hydraulic from zoom. And here's your reservoirs. Seven speed Shimano shifter. Downshift, upshift, downshift, upshift. On the left side, you get your thumb throttle, which does have a nice little rubber thing here. This is like one of the better thumb throttles for sure on any of these e-bikes I review. Then your controls here. Pedal assist down, up, light, power, and info. Probably wouldn't leave home without putting this on here. And as I mentioned, it does have a quick release to make it easy to take the front wheel on and off. And yes, we do have this, but you should still put these on. Oh yeah, this one has a torque sensor, so definitely put these on. As for the fenders, these are optional. I actually think this bike looks pretty sweet without them. Add or not to add. I mean, dude, I don't think there's any rain in the forecast for a couple months at least. Just kind of set them on there. I guess that's kind of what it would look like with the fenders. Doesn't really actually change it too much. You just can't see that aggressive looking knobby tread pattern. I like it, let's do it. Okay, I did it. Battery's already full. Let's pop it on in there. 
And this bike ships as a class two, but Hopsco has an app and in the app you can unlock it to class three, super easy. They give you a little QR code here to scan with the app. We'll do that in just a few, but let's turn it on and see what it looks like. I would like to point out any flickering you see is just the camera. Your eyes do not see any flickering. That'll be more of a thing when we get out on the actual ride on that camera. It gives you your battery up here in a bar readout, miles per hour, pedal assist mode, which they give you five out of the box. Trip, odometer, trip. Odometer. It's got all your essentials right here, front and center, easy to read. So here's what I look like getting on this bike on minimum seat height. I am six foot five with an inseam of 34. And maximum seat height, so comfortable riding position. All right, dudes, let's take the Hobbs Go Hob Alpha out, but first let's add our device with the uh, QR code here. Oh, there we go, came right up, nice. So with this app, we can unlock this bike to like class three higher speeds. Start out in the default mode, then play with this stuff later. Per usual, we'll start the Strava so we can track our official distance and the step through. Oh yeah. Throttle does nothing on pedal assist zero, but one. Oh yeah. As always, we'll start this ride off from a dead standstill at the base of the 20% grade and do throttle only. I weigh 200 pounds. And this is basically just a stress test to see how the motor can do on its own without any help. So ready to go, full throttle. And the Hobsco motors, this is not my first time on one of these motors, it's a strong hill climber, as we can see. So I don't know if you guys have watched any of my other reviews, but there is a very uh, similar product to this on the market that is not able to like climb hills like this at all. And it costs more than this bike and has a smaller battery. So we'll get out here for a little ride here on this uh, lovely Saturday afternoon here in Southern California. And uh, we'll feel this bike out. Although looking at the spec sheet, I have to say, you know, it seems like a pretty decent value out of the box. So of course we have that thumb throttle that we can mash on and get all the power, but that's really not what this bike is about. It's got a torque sensor. Put this thing on down to pedal assist one here in gear one and kind of just give it a little bit of help here and just kind of see how it feels. So the torque sensors, if you don't already know this from watching my other reviews, they give you power based on how hard you're pressing in the pedals. And right away, I should say any flickering you see on this GoPro is only because of my GoPro camera. It has nothing to do with the actual display. To my eyes, this display looks totally fine and I can see it through my polarized lenses, which is always a bonus. That's not true for every bike I review on this channel. So as I was saying about the torque sensors, these ones are like really, really good for if you're looking for a bike that feels, if you're looking for an e-bike that feels like a bicycle and it gives you power based on how hard you're pressing on the pedals. This makes for a much more natural, intuitive riding experience. These brakes are feeling good right away. We'll use a little throttle here to get us moving and then shift it up a gear two to gear five, cruise it along here. So pedal is this one, you know, if you're looking to really extend the range of this massive 20 amp hour battery pack, you could probably get some serious range out of this thing uh, while getting a very natural, intuitive riding experience with this torque sensor. So let's crank it on up to pedal assist two here and see how this feels. Now it just gives you a little bit more power basically. One big difference between a cadence sensor and a torque sensor, typically cadence sensors, they'll like give you like a hard limit on what speed they'll help you up to and then they won't help you any beyond that. That's not how a torque sensor works. Pedaling along here at 15 miles an hour, when I start pressing harder, we can see that little blue bar kicking up higher and it's getting me up to 20 miles an hour. But if I want an easier riding experience, I can crank it up to like pedal assist four. Now when I'm on pedal assist four, let's just crank it on up to gear seven now. I really don't need to put in hardly any effort at all. You know, based on how hard I'm pressing on the pedals, it'll still give me power based on how hard I'm pedaling. So as I mentioned, if you're looking for a bicycling experience rather than like a motorcycling experience, the torque sensors are really a great option. Now, if you want to be lazy and you don't want to have to pedal at all and you just want to ghost pedal, you might want to consider a cadence sensor. Although on this bike, you still have the throttle. So you kind of get the best of both, both worlds in a way. I mean, you could get that natural pedaling experience or use the throttle. And those nicely. You can tell, I mean, it's not quite as nimble as a shorter 20 inch tire. These 26 inch wheels and tires, they, they've got a little mass to them. Benefit of that is they, they help you run stuff over and do off-roading, which we'll try 
a little bit of sand riding here and a bit out on the beach. And then obviously they give you a little bit of cushion too. So this one has the front suspension, no rear suspension, but you could always add like a suspension seat post. Now let's see, I don't know exactly what this does on pedal assist five, but let's go ahead and see what, how much it helps us up to. After you get to like 20, it stops helping you completely on the out of the box settings for a class two electric bicycle. That's just what they are. But let's open the app now and change that. Because we're about to get out on a faster road here. So we'll get into e-bike classes. And then all you gotta do is just basically check the class three box. Let's go try it out. So starting from a stop here, we'll just smash the throttle a little bit, give it a little bit of pedaling. The thing I like about these uh, uh, torque sensors is you can leave them on pedal assist five all the time and just pedal a little bit and they'll help you quite a bit. So hopping on out here into traffic, let's see. Throttle will bring you up to 20 still, but then when you start pedaling, let off the throttle and start pedaling. Now it should take us up to 28 miles per hour. And as we can see, 28 is showing up on the display there. And then the blue bar power is reducing. So it'll let you go up to 28 and that's, that's all you can do legally for a class three electric bike. Now be mindful if you do unlock uh, class three and have 28 miles per hour, you will drain your battery quite a bit faster because when you're going faster, speed kills range. You get a lot more uh, aerodynamic inefficiencies and the motor just has to work uh, way more hard to go, you know, 28 than it does 20. But I mean, we do have the 20 amp hour battery pack. Throttle. So we'll go ahead and hop on this bike and see what it does zero to 20 under throttle only. Here's the GPS in my right hand. Ready, go. So pretty torquey feeling motor. 10, 15, 19, 20. So uh, yeah, it's a strong motor on this uh, Hov scale Hov Alpha. Good hill climber, fast accelerator uh, for the money, man. Um, and with the torque sensor too, I do not think this is a bad deal at all. Especially, you know, when you consider like the Aventon Adventure 2, uh, <laughs> to say names specifically, and uh, other popular bikes like Rad, power bikes you know the rad rover 6 plus this thing absolutely dominates the rad rover and it is way less expensive this spec wise this bike is better in every way and cheaper and then like aventon adventure 2 for example i mean this one's got the torque sensor and a bigger battery and it's basically the same letting you guys know what do you guys think? Of course, you could compare this bike to other higher power bikes like the Wired Freedom. That is an absolute animal monster beast mode of a bike. But, you know, maybe not everybody's looking for that sort of thing. That is not really like a street legal electric bike. This pretty much maxes out what you can achieve, uh, you know, with a class three electric bike that's still legal. And I mean, this one has a torque sensor, unlike the Wired Freedom. To compare Wired Freedom to this bike directly, pretty much Wired Freedom is really kind of more like a motorcycle, whereas this is uh, more of a, a bicycle. And we are about to be to the beach here and we can see it's gonna be a poppin' Saturday afternoon. Oh, there goes a, a street, non-street legal bike up there, the Saran. Dude's whip it, see if we can catch him. There's a fat tire e-bike. As far as the comfort on this bike, it's great. It's got the ergonomic grips that are held in place with the bolt and the seat is pretty typical. Wide seat here. What? Hobsco. Hobsco, never even heard of it. Yeah, they're kind of like a unknown brand, kind of underrated, really. I was gonna say, it's nice you got fenders. Yeah, yeah. Uh, have you heard of Aventon? Yes. Yeah, it's pretty much that, but better and cheaper. Okay. <laughs> how, mu how much was it? This one is 1,600 bucks right now. 1,600, that is cheap. Jay walk in, might be time for a brake test early. Yeah, dude, just to say it again, man, I love that these bikes you can just leave on like pedal assist five and it's got the torque sensor. I mean, if this was a cadence sensor, this this bike would basically be flooring it right now on pedal assist five. But with the torque sensor, I can just kind of barely touch on the pedals and cruise right on wherever I need to go here. Parking lot is full. It would have been $18 to park here today. Welcome to summer in LA. We'll get out here and ride in the sand a little bit. Oh, we got a little sunshine at the beach. It looks like more sunshine to come. So let's feel this torque sensor out a little bit because not all torque sensors are created equal. I've uh, experienced some that are not so great. Let's give it a go here. I'm not pedaling. I saw pedal assist five pedaling now and it kicks in right away. And sometimes on the lower end when I'm just barely pedaling these torque sensors, they'll be like really twitchy. This one feels pretty darn good. I can just barely be putting, you know, about two pounds of pressure on the pedal and 
it'll start giving me power. And since I have it on pedal assist five, it's like most exaggerated right here so I can feel the feedback the best. Give it a little bit more and it, it just really naturally kicks in. I don't know if you guys can see the blue bars on the screen there. Now we gotta make it through here. So let's give it like a little hard push. It kicks in right away, as you can see there. Motor does not make like too much noise at all. We're in top gear seven here. This torque sensor feels great, man. I mean, I guess you could just get on a stationary bike and sit out here and ride here or you could get out and live a little holy crap dude we gotta go over there and see what's happening feeling good about climbing this hill let's give it a go oh yeah so this is a benefit of like the the big tires just monster truck tires easily conquered that hill a lot, a lot of bikes that review cannot do that what's happening here man is that a sword so it doesn't have rear suspension but since since you kind of get off the seat on this one kind of like a high leg extension you kind of use your legs as suspension a little bit as you're pedaling unlike you know like a moped style bike or something so you don't really need full suspension on a bike like this like i said you can just throw on uh, one of those suspension seat posts if you really if you really want some uh suspension in the seat you're open bro shoot it it is wild out here today man do you guys dig the energy or do you like riding out in nature and peace i like both honestly I like getting out in the mountains too, so some rustling going on. This is where the thumb throttle comes in handy when you just want to kind of scoot along a little bit. Bike's really easy to control. Might have to grab me one of these. Look at this dude. What's this dude got? Upside down stuff happening. Oh! Oh yeah, no problem at all. Get through the sand. Throttle is so clutch right now. I wonder if I could get a surfboard on this bike like this dude's got here. My goodness, dude, it is an absolute party out here today. Welcome to summer in LA. Should I grab a Red Bull amp this review up a little bit? Run some kids over? <laughs> Just kidding. I didn't see him. I was like, uh, I had my head to the right. Got myself a little tripod here. I guess I should actually get like a, a real tripod. That's hilarious. <laughs> All right, let's go try this thing on the sand. And I'm feeling good about this one. Shifted down a few gears. I think we could probably just pop off here. Put it on gear two, full throttle. Oh yeah, man. I can just feel, I'm not even really pedaling much. I'm just like, I just have like the throttle pinned. It actually helps a little bit to uh, pedal. So this is a, a really strong performing uh, beach cruising. Oh, I just lost my balance a little bit there. Beach cruising sand rider relative to most bikes i try on this channel anyway so it's got the 26 inch tall uh tires and it makes me just want to stay out here in the the soft pack sand for like a longer time because it, it can do it so well compared to a lot of the bikes i review the 20 inch tire bikes just can't really do it quite as well but as you can see here these big knobby tires four inch wide they are on about 18 psi so if you bump them down a little bit lower, it could probably do a little better. But I mean, as you can see, this thing is just wrecking shot, dude. No problem, not here at all. Very, very strong performing <laughs> sand ripping bike. This is very refreshing after having so many bikes in a row now that have been like pretty bad, honestly. Oh no, it's getting like really deep here. <laughs> this, <laughs> this sand right here is like particularly super super soft just lost it finally but i mean i haven't had one do this good in a long time i think we can hop right back on here you step through frames so it makes it easy to do oh yeah there we go we're right back in business no problem and we'll just keep torture testing torturing it here i actually had it on gear two but now it's on gear one and this is like some uba super soft sand i don't know what happened right there but that is like freaking quicksand I bet you if I drop the PSI in these tires just a little bit, we could probably get through that super soft stuff. We'll keep it going. <gasps> that was a little bit of work there. So we'll see if the controller holds up or if it, you know, overheats on us or something. Kind of doubt it, but we'll see. Battery's showing four out of five bars after that. Probably a little voltage sag. We'll see if it bounces back. So another benefit of the 20 amp hour battery pack is uh, you can just do stuff like that. You can push it harder for longer. Not necessarily do you need to do like more distance. You just have more power on tap for longer. And generally, a bigger battery you know it just seems to be able to deliver a little bit more juice obviously that largely depends on the controller which i don't know what the max amperage on this controller actually is but i can tell that it is uh, a strong one so after that sand riding we're going to take a turn off right here and do a little hill test keep pushing this motor and controller see if it holds up rolling in here at about eight miles an hour we'll do throttle only see what it does on its own holding 11 
MPH, 10 MPH. And seems like it's gonna hold us at about, oh, nine, so yeah, strong. Dude, there's like a straight up like fire hydrant like exploding. What is happening over here? Good. Oh, we got the fenders, man. They're coming in handy here. That thing was like shooting straight up like 30 feet, man. Sounds like it just rained. I guess somebody like must have hit that thing or something. Oh, dude, that guy hit the thing. This dude definitely, you can see the damage on his car. Dude definitely smashed that thing. <laughs> Told you guys, I had a feeling it was gonna be a wild day out here. All right, you guys know what time it is. California incline time. Uh, 85 foot climb, 12% grade. And uh, we'll just see how this bike performs. All right, heading into the loop-de-loop -loop here. The biggest challenge will not be the hill, but probably avoiding the people. Pulling, 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 nine miles an hour. Strong performance as expected. We'll test the brakes here in just a minute, but I really like the levers on these. Went around the corner, full throttle. 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 miles an hour. We might get 19, 19. And that was with no pedaling whatsoever. And just a minute ago, we were down there on the bike path. A little bit of marine layer. Can't quite see the mountains in today's video. We can see the pier just a little bit. This cargo e-bike's gotta be electric, man. Squeeze on through here. Watch out, people. <laughs> This is a fun bike, dude. It's the bikes that are underpowered are the ones that are not fun. So we're gonna go give it a brake test here in just a moment. So when I'm on this bike, I feel, you know, a little bit up there, kind of like tall, until I roll up on this dude. Oh my goodness, this is sketchy. Look at this frame. Nice bike, dude. I need to do this brake test a little early if we have some people running out in front of us. Go ahead and give it a little brake test here from 20 miles an hour. So, brakes. <laughs> Oh yeah, these are great brakes, man. They're 180 millimeter rotors. The zoom levers, I really particularly like these zoom levers because you can kind of just hook your finger on there. They just feel really nice to grab. And since they are hydraulic, they just have a very uh, smooth linear power delivery. Very predictable and strong. Great brakes. So final thoughts on the Hofscale Hoth Alpha. I mean, for 1600 bucks with my discount code linked below the video, I think this is actually pretty darn good value, especially when you compare it to other stuff on the market that's popular. I mean, the 20 amp hour battery pack has got a strong motor, torque sensor. What else can you really ask for from a fat tire electric bike that's legal? If you want to grab one, click the link below this video, use my discount code, but let's head on home, check the final range on our battery. Let's see if we can pop through here. Oh yeah, no problem. Maybe we can swing through, pop a quick little yeah, one of these ones. <laughs> Take a little shortcut there. Pass those people. Hopefully that's not urine I just ran over. <laughs> Strong motor on this bike. Front suspension, knobby tires may not be the most efficient, but they sure give you traction and make you feel confident. Let's actually see if we can pop through here. Loose sand, loose sand, losing momentum a little bit. Let's downshift a couple gears. Don't think we'll have a problem. Well, as long as we don't hit these sharks and crabs. Doing this little maneuver here but let's give it a try oh yeah throttle only that's what i'm talking about this place is crazy today hey, shout out to all the skaters in the house what thank about the e-bikers bro are these caffeinated they are okay. yeah sure yeah thank you i appreciate you what do we got here 200 milligrams legit it's like this cocoa robot's having about as difficult of a time as i am navigating so check it out here's the aventon adventure the 2.0 version of that bike is two thousand dollars it does have a torque sensor but this one has a much larger battery 20 amp hour battery pack compared to 15 amp hour battery pack on those and there's the fire crew in there looking at me they're like don't you make fun of my e-bike bro all right dude just rolling up to the neighborhood uh 19.5 miles today just a minute or two short of two hours of ride time showing four out of five battery bars there so it says 80 percent i'll give you the exact percentage readout here and the voltage in just one moment so a massive 20 amp hour battery pack paired up to a torque sensor on a fat tire e-bike that's going to give you like the most range pretty much possible compared to like a cadence sensor how much range can you get on this bike uh, you know it just really depends i'd say at least 40 miles that's if you're like really you know going crazy on it but uh, you can extend this easily 50 60 more miles just really depends on your speed but dudes if you guys are in the market for a big battery torque sensor fat tire e-bike i really don't think you can go wrong with this one at this price point check the link below this video and use my discount code at checkout and you'll get the best price should be about 1600 bucks which you know as i already mentioned I mean, if you're looking at like a Rad Power, uh, Rad Rover 6 Fat Tire e-bike or an Aventon Adventure, which are both very popular bikes, 
This one significantly outperforms those bikes, no question about it. Bigger battery, it has a torque sensor, lower price, stronger motor. So if this is what you're looking for, click the link below this video, buy this bike. I can just about guarantee you, you're gonna really like this bike and it's nice, dude. Just four out of five bars. What's the meter say? 48.9 volts after uh, basically 21 miles. And this chart here says 49 volts would be about 63%.